back in the day and in, in Boulder, they opted to, you know, leave the professional running scene behind because Thank you. All right, let's go. We made it to downtown Denver. And yes, those drone shots do connect to the vlog today. Also, this jersey connects to the vlog today. Go Avs, it's the NHL playoffs right now. So here is the deal. Usually I don't talk about money and economics too much here on the channel, but when enough vlog fans out there, shout out to Abraham for emailing me this article from Runner's World, but also I received the same article along with another article about UTMB. We'll get to that in a minute. When enough people email me the same article, I realize, okay, this is a topic we should talk about and break it down and analyze. Here's the deal. This article, it's a really, I think it's a great article with respect to opening the eyes, and I'll try and remember to link to it down below in the description, uh, opening the eyes to the current financial situation for many professional runners in the United States, okay? And two of the runners that are highlighted, one is uh, one of the gentlemen is Ben True, the other is Noah Drody, um, I believe is how you say his last name, and he was actually in Toledo, and he was on the starting line in Toledo. I think he, he was just doing the run for fun. Um, I don't think he was actually racing it. But in this article, I just wanna read this real quick. Ben True, who is a top 10 all-time American at the, at the 10,000 meter distance, okay? So he's the real deal, okay? So Ben said this recently in the article, sorry. He said, a 220 male marathoner who also has a drone and a great Instagram account or YouTube channel might be gaining followers, True said, while a 205 marathoner is training hard and devoting his craft toward the next race. The average person, they don't understand that 15 minute difference, he said, uh, one historically will cost that company, so ta he's talking specifically about, you know, Nike, Reebok, Adidas, whoever's sponsoring that athlete, um, one historically will cost that company a lot of money, meaning, you know, the salary for the professional runner, you know, potentially health insurance, potentially flying the athlete around the country or around the world to compete. Um, the other does not cost much at all and will get a whole lot more eyeballs on the product. Oh, Ben, you nailed it. And also just one more quote from Noah. Uh, he said that most of your favorite athletes are broke and uninsured. He actually tweeted that out maybe a couple months ago. Um, so also in the article, it breaks down like a lot of salaries for professional runners or they can hover around between 30,000 and 100,000, which sounds about right based on the research that I've done. And a lot of times we don't know exactly how much, how much these athletes are making as professional runners because in their contracts they have to sign these NDAs, these non-disclosure agreements. And last point I guess on the financial side is that agents are taking 15%, oftentimes taking 15% at least of the cut. So if you get, you know, a $100,000 salary, the agent is making $15,000 off of that one athlete. Now toward the end of the article, the article said, even so, $30,000 is nothing to sneeze at, especially for a job that's about pursuing individual goals. 
And that's an interesting perspective. And I don't know if I agree that 30,000 is nothing to sneeze at in the sense that if you're single and you know you don't have a family yet and you have a studio apartment or a very you live somewhere that's you know a very affordable place yeah you can make thirty thousand dollars a year work but it's that goes very quickly you guys know like if you're just entering the workforce like thirty thousand again depending on where you live and i'm talking specifically about the economics that i understand here in the united states uh, more specifically so um, I'm gonna say like, no, these companies are, especially if you don't have health insurance, $30,000 is not gonna go very far, which is one of the reasons that I knew, and this is a little bit you know, of a tip of the day, I knew, like know thyself, I'm always saying that here on the channel, I knew coming out of college my talent level and the potential that I could, now back then, trail running, ultra running, going into that as a professional and turning that into your salary was much more uh, foreign and like it, it wasn't very common to do that versus you know track athletes or road athletes um so i knew okay i've got to pivot i've got to make my own my own revenue streams i've got to figure out the my own way to to pay my bills, um, not go down the, the the contract route where you're signing with a New Balance or a Saucony or a Hoka or whatever the case may be. Um, which, so I think Ben, true, if for some reason, like I, I don't know if they're watching this YouTube channel, but what I'm always, not always saying, but to a high school athlete out there listening right now or a coach who is advising his athletes on the future. I would honestly, I'm just gonna say, my opinion and recommendation is invest in your own brand. Create your own brand. Like you now, the middleman is, I'm not saying completely cut out, but because of social media, because of the ability for us to communicate with a large audience, you can create your own, I'm just gonna say, your own future. Now, does it happen with a snap of the finger? Is signing a contract probably gonna be easier to do if you have that opportunity? I would say 100%. Um, but for the younger athletes, I guess I'm talking to specifically, and or the coaches who are coaching younger athletes, don't hesitate to think about other paths, unless, of, you know, if you're winning NCAA championships, if you're qualifying for the Olympics, like, yeah, you know you're gonna you're gonna have opportunities to sign a contract but a lot of athletes are in that middle area where it's you know speaking to noah and to ben like that's exactly that's the area that it's really difficult and i'm gonna say like again if you want to start a family which is why a lot of my former cu athlete uh, cu teammates back in the day and in, in boulder they opted to you know, leave the professional running scene behind because they couldn't, it's like you can't pay the bills. Especially again, if you wanna start a family, buy a house, um, live, live, you know, fairly comfortably. Uh, so it's a really interesting, okay, one more point I just remembered and then I'll stop, eyeballs, which the article talks about. And again, link to it down below. It is about eyeballs, the ROI, the return on investment for companies, for these big brands, these running shoe companies. They wanna know how many eyeballs are you putting on their product? And whether we like it or not, sports is, a, you know, it, it is a business. You know, back in the day, maybe it wasn't as much so, but now it definitely is a business and it is an economic generator. And that's why like the Avalanche, go Avs, like that's why I'm wearing this jersey today. They won their playoff game last night and the Avalanche um, know that they, have eyeballs on their players, whether the you know whether they're sponsored by Adidas or Nike or whomever. Um, so eyeballs are important, and that's why again investing in yourself and thinking about creating your own brand and UTMB. Okay, ah, it's hard. I understand both sides of the argument. Some people are not pleased that UTMB is going down this path. So what they did is they partnered with Iron Man to create a bigger. Uh, conglomerate uh, for the trail racing scene is specifically around the races and uh, that UTMB puts on and it is going to give UTMB a lot more I will say power in the ultra running and trail running world and at the end of the day it's going to put more it's crazy I know I know it's going to put more eyeballs on the sport which 
oh, it's like a, it's like it's a give and take. Like, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna say for the professional ultra runners out there that are sponsored by these big brands like the North Face, like Solomon, like Adidas now is getting more athletes in the trail running scene. But um, progress or the evolution of any sport is hard to slow down once you know it really does turn into a business on the financial side and same with hayward field in eugene oregon the new home of this beautiful beautiful track but they tore down the old one and that kind of broke my heart but at the end of the day like the old wooden stands are gone from hayward field but at the end of the day it's going to allow a lot more yes eyeballs to see these athletes compete and to put more exposure onto these big brands which 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 we're buying we're interacting with we're engaging with we're buying their shoes and we're doing running shoe reviews for these companies uh, because it allows us to have fun and train all right crazy enough i think i'm gonna call it there everybody it is a busy time we're still packing getting that uh, trailer packed up so Calling it there, but this uh, Green Mountain Runner, you get the comment of the day. It actually connects really well to what we were just talking about with respect to family. So Green Mountain Runner said, so inspiring to know even the best runners have to prioritize for family. Thanks, Seth, for being so generous and open person. Meaning, we were just talking about last night with, um, you know, my I have to discern, like, can I go to Spain and race, which I haven't made a final decision on. Uh, but it connects to these professional runners who, they're trying. They're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to put food on the table. And at the end of the day, they've got to prioritize their family because they love them. And that's how it should be. So question of the day, what do you think about this whole professional running economic conundrum that is not just present in the United States, but I know around the world. And if you want to talk about UTMB as well, partnering with Ironman, this is going to be interesting down below in the comments. And you know, money, you know, money can be a little uh, controversial at times, but it, I think it's good to talk about as fans of the sport and as we try and, um, I'm, not, I'm not going to say grow the sport, but just um, support the, the athletes whom we're cheering on at these big races and continuing to hope the best for because, you know, they inspire us. And I think it's good for us to support them in their pursuit of their dreams. So, all right, everyone, we'll, we're calling it there. Thanks for tuning in. Our, you know what? So I made a vlog about a month ago all about professional running versus being a professional YouTuber. And it connects so, so well to today's topic, professional running. And we'll, so we'll, we'll toss to it right there, right there, right there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in here in, not in the studio, in downtown Denver. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.